So let me tell you what the Librarian of Congress, formerly the head of the Smithsonian Institute, today the Librarian of Congress, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, an international scholar, what he teaches his students about the origin of the French Revolution, that watershed event that is being played out today. Because as James H. Billing points out, the French Revolution was the second great revolution in a series of revolutions that uh, swept Europe during the 19th century and culminated in the 20th century with the Russian Revolution in 1917 and the Cuban Revolution in 1959, 1958 and 1959. Of course, those revolutions continue. And you really can't understand why it is that we're not trying to, to close our borders and we're allowing just unbridled and unlimited immigration into America. You can't understand what we're really doing over in Iraq. You can't understand why everything our government is doing seems to be directed towards destroying the value of our currency. You can't understand anything that's going on today unless you understand the background of the French Revolution and what James H. Billington wrote. So let me, let me summarize what he said. The revolutionary faith was shaped not so much by the critical rationalism of the French Enlightenment as by the occultism and proto-romanticism of Germany. This faith was incubated in France during the revolutionary era within a small subculture of literary intellectuals who were immersed in journalism, fascinated by secret societies, and subsequently infatuated with the ideologies of a secular surrogate for religious belief. The flame of faith had become its migration a century earlier when some European aristocrats transferred their lighted candles from Christian altars to occult Masonic lodges. The flame of occult alchemy, which had promised to turn dross into gold, reappeared at the center of circles, seeking to recreate a golden age. Bavarian Illuminists plotting against the Jesuits. French Philadelphians plotting against Napoleon. And then, of course, the Italian charcoal burners plotting against the Habsburgs. So it's so important that you begin to understand uh, that the foundation of the French Revolution was really in a secret societies and in occultism. And the great tragedy of our time is that most people don't understand that the ongoing world revolution is based in occultism and based upon the secret societies. And those of you who have not yet read my book, The Brotherhood of Darkness, let me suggest you get it. It's easy to read. It will introduce you to many of the secret societies, uh, organizations which work within the shadows, determining who your next president will be and how the, uh, the voting machines are going to be regulated so that their candidate always wins. Well, let me give you an example of how our minds are controlled. Because I would like to suggest that most of what you think you believe or most of what you believe you think is true really is not true. And let me start out with something that got my attention some 43 years ago when I accidentally tuned into the wrong television program. It was in 1962. I was a young, successful orthopedic surgeon. I came home and I wanted to watch a program. It was called The Naked City. There were eight million stories in The Naked City. That's how it started. And it was a fascinating detective uh, story. And, but I got the wrong person. Uh, here was an old man up there on the television screen, and he was talking about the fact that the United States was not a democracy. And he was talking about the fact that Fidel Castro was a lifelong communist. And of course, Fidel Castro had come to power in January of 1959. And we had been told he was an anti-communist. And now, by 62, we were told he was a communist. And none of this really made too much in the way of sense. So I had an uneasy feeling that perhaps there was an element of truth to what he was saying. He was talking about how the media in the United States was actually controlled and we were not able to get the truth from the media or from our educational systems. And it seemed so ridiculous. I got up three separate times to change that television program. And three times I sat back down and I, at the end of the program, they had a number they flashed on the screen. And you know, I can always remember numbers, but I couldn't forget that number. And, uh, you know, I uh, eventually called and began getting involved with the patriotic movement. One of the things that really impressed me most was the fact 
that America was not a democracy. Now, I was a graduate of the University of California. I graduated with honors. I had a Phi Beta Kappa key. I, I really thought I was pretty smart, but you know, as you get older, you begin to realize how foolish you really are because you've accepted what everybody has been telling you. And if you go into the background of this idea that we're a democracy, if you read the Declaration of Independence, uh, the American Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Federalist Papers, or the the constitutions of all of our states, you will find that every one of them says that we are a republic, not a democracy. In fact, if you read the Federalist Papers, you will find that the, the, the only thing that says in the Federalist Papers about our form of government is the last thing we want is the democracy.